People often ask me how I come up with these large trees and how I locate them. This is how it usually starts. Hey, how are you doing? I'm going to tell you. You go down there to that red fence on the left. Yeah, on the left. Place. Yeah, okay. Look out there at that big lake. I'm building a house behind it. Okay. And this side of the pond, giant pine tree grow over over there. You want to get rid of it? It's land there. When I leave, I've got a trailer load today, and it'll be next week before I can get down there. Any part of it you won't get, leave I the rest, and I'll try to that gentleman that just stopped by to visit with me met him about eight weeks ago here at Steve's place. Uh, he's his neighbor. Toby was doing the dirt work on Steve's new house while I was cutting a bunch of large hackberry logs out of Steve's front yard, which was an old fence row. And that's where Toby learned that I had both the chainsaws and trailers and equipment to move huge logs like this pecan tree he's offered me. Apparently the same windstorm that blew this hackberry down blew a three foot diameter pecan tree down up there at his place. So when we finish doing what we're doing here, I'm gonna drive up there and look at it. And then I'll schedule time maybe next week to come cut and load that three foot diameter pecan tree and get it back because pecan wood is highly desirable. We done. Let's hit the road and go look at that pecan tree. See if it's worth taking home. There it is. There's a big one. doing cows well you guys got it made hadn't you found you a shade tree a tank to, to go cool off in that is one right there so I'm seeing it's over there. It's over three foot wide. That's that's maybe forty inches. Maybe forty inches. Oh man, this is what we're seeing so much of. Canker disease rots the roots off of them. See, the tree was growing. Still got foliage up here on it. Still got foliage on it. And that's what the canker disease does. It break, it rots the roots off. The tree breaks. There is a lot of pecan wood here. More than one load. Main log is gonna be one load. Now, I hear people say animals are dumb. Does that look like some dumb animals? It's hot out here. They found a huge pecan tree for a shade. They found them a tank to go cool off in. And I'm out here working and they're just in, eating some grass and enjoying life. And we call ourselves smart. <laughs> All right, there's that pecan tree. It is a big one. Over, and the trunk is over three foot diameter when you get up there close to it. And there's a lot of big stuff down there. In this area, you want a tree to grow that big. You plant your pecan tree or you plant your red oak tree. In this northeast Texas region, they're about the only trees that'll get that large. Now, some of your sycamores that are planted, they're not native to this part. They're native to more eastern part of Texas. Right around here, they're only here. They planted. They'll get huge. All right, today we're headed to East Tawakini, Texas. We're gonna go rescue a 40-inch uh, diameter pecan tree that the canker disease broke the roots off and it fell over. So we're gonna cut it up 
bring it back here so we can use it for woodworking and wood turning projects. Stick with us, we see a big log today. First thing we gotta do on this big tree is cut the major limbs off of it. A lot of work here. I'm gonna try to load and move this as a 20 foot long log, so we're cutting it to length. A lot of work here, so I brought help from the Hunt County Wood Turners. We have some additional help, and of course they're gathering some wood for themselves while we're cutting this up. Everybody will go home with a lot of wood from this thing. We're gonna have to wait till we roll it over to cut that now. And I need to cut some more here, but they're teaching on them. Turns out that this got a rotten cord about right here. Maybe a little farther, but I'm gonna start off by cutting it right here. And we can always cut it off more later, but right now I'm gonna get it on the ground by cutting it there. Notice as I cut this that my 36 inch long chainsaw won't reach all the way through this log. It likes about an inch or so. Now we're gonna have to roll it over so we can finish cutting limbs. It's, it's setting down on a couple limbs here. Might we'll have to roll it over to get it off of them. You go this way. Yeah, you need to roll it that way. All right, so let me get the trailer hooked up. And it's binding down on the stump. I was gonna get the stump out of the way and that'll let that have some slack if I can pull this stump out of the way. All right, pull on the stump. Let me get that wedge out of the way before that gets on top of it. Ready? Yep. You're pulling, you're doing it. Pull it some more. Pretty close. Oh, yeah. Keep more. Okay, that'll, that'll do it. Back off. Stop. Back off. We'll pull it out with the wing. Stand, watch it. I don't know what them limbs are gonna do. Bert, hold it right there. Would somebody hand me that big saw over the log? Let me trim a limb, then we'll pull some more. No, I want you to stay right there. Yeah, I'm gonna saw that and off, then we'll roll a little more and saw another one off. Thank you, dear.
much head left on the stool. Uh, well, that's a good. I don't know if y'all, oh, wait a minute, out lesson. Do y'all ever look at the specs on a winch? That's a 17,500 pound winch. If you look at the specs, you find out that it only pulls 17,000 pounds if you're on the bottom roll. As soon as you put the second layer of cable on it, it drops like 10,000 pounds full. So the emptier your spool is, the more torque it has. Does that make sense? <laughs> Sometimes read the specs on a winch, you'll see. Yeah. As you can see, we have doubled the cable from our 17,500 pound winch. That theoretically gives us 35,000 pounds of pull. Uh, it also, uh, moving these heavy logs creates a huge amperage draw on my batteries. I have to run three full 800 amp batteries just to move this log at this point. What I'm doing here is the log is trying to roll to your left as we're looking at it. It's trying to roll over on us. So I'm hooking a second winch with a snatch block on the trailer to pull it back and keep it from rolling over while my main winch pulls it on the trailer. This means you have to literally run two winches at one time, one for pulling and one to keep it from rolling. Now we got another problem. The uh, log, the big limb on the right side of the log is trying to catch on the back of the trailer. So I've had to hook a third winch to the back of the log with a snatch block and swing the back of the log back. That means we're literally operating three winches at one time. One of them to swing the log into alignment on the trailer, one to keep it up from rolling, and another one to pull the log on. Of course, the more the log goes on there, you have to keep constantly readjusting all the uh, snatch box and cable hookups to get the right angles on them.
All right, the job is done. We got the big log loaded. We're tightening everything down, ready to go home and call it a day. It's hot out here, so let's go home and cool off a little bit. Starting out early this morning, going back to East Tawakini where we were last week, we loaded the main part of the log, a 38 inch log it turned out to be, that was 20 feet long and brought it back, which was a trailer load. And uh, we're going back this morning to pick up some of the limbs that we cut off that tree. Some of those limbs are nearly two foot diameter. Uh, so we're going back to get a load of those long limbs bring them back. Uh, they will make good turning blanks and uh, firewood and other things that we want to do with them. So we're off to get another load. You might have noticed the other day that uh, we were having a lot of trouble with this uh, wireless remote for this winch. Well, I went to Harbor Freight and they've got this new wireless remote that I bought. And uh, seems to be much better made than the old one. $59 for the little kit. Uh, I can use it by plugging this in. I can use it as a wireless remote or I can take this card and plug in and use it as a wired remote or wired winch lever. But it seems to be all right. You just plug that in, start this thing up. And then we'll get it going here in a second. And wind your winch. So um, I hope this lasts longer than those other ones. The problem we had with the other ones, they had about one year, they were totally wore out. So. I have high hopes of this one lasting a little longer.
you might have noticed that these logs are going on there much easier and faster than the previous log. Well, that huge 38 inch log weighed a lot, around 7,000 pounds. These little old lightweight uh, 18 inch and two foot diameter logs don't weigh near as much, so the winches aren't straining. They're, they're much more efficient and they're doing a quick job of it. So you come to supervise, huh? Well, you're like that. Alright, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to unload these logs. I usually do it in two different ways. One, I can get my John Deere tractor and hook onto one log at a time and drag it off if they're not too big. Uh, but I want to show you another way. Uh, this trailer has three winches on it that you've seen, and I use them to maneuver a log on the trailer. But you can also use them to get logs off a trailer if you rig it right. I'm going to take a minute to uh, do the rigging, and then I'll explain what I'm doing a little bit. As you can see, what we're doing is we're running a cable all the way from the winch to the rear to a snatch block, and then the cable goes back to the front. We will hook the two cables together, and the two winches will pull simultaneously. Get those logs off. All right. As you see here, I have two 12,000 pound winches. They both go to the rear, around the snatch block, and back. And then the two hooks of the winch are, are hooked right here. By pulling on these winches, it's gonna just push that log off the rear. And I can unload that way. One thing you can do once the 
end of the log hits the ground back there, you can just uh, put your truck in neutral and, and uh, the winches then will move your truck forward out from under the log. We'll try that here in just a second. All right, put these down for a second. Now I'm gonna move the camera back so the trailer won't run over it. And then I'm gonna put the truck in neutral. Back at it. And notice the trailer's moving forward. Somewhere along here, our winches are going to get fine. That's about all I can do. Alright, I'm going to drive forward to get out from under the lock. have tried this before but let's see if it works I'm gonna try to pull two logs at once don't know if my winches will handle it the only way I know is to experiment and find out we shall see Let's see if it works. Two two logs at once with two, with two inches. What I'm going to do is use this winch to pull that log over where it won't be jammed back there. Now let's go back to our original hookup. Okay, truck's in neutral. The log ends are on the ground, so when I pull on the cable, it should push the truck out from underneath it with the winches. As far as I can go with the winches, I've lost my mechanical advantage on them. So I'm just going to drive out from under it to get the rest of it. Hey, 
And there we are. Three logs unloaded using two inches and, and snatch blocks. I might point out that this 38 inch pecan log that's 20 feet long, we unloaded with the same method last week when we brought it home. This, this is all the same tree. Uh, I brought home two loads of this, this tree, this big pecan tree, and there's at least two more loads down there. It is one big tree. Not everything goes to lumber around here or turning blanks. Texas smoking wood here, this pecan. I got plans for making some of this into some good smoking barbecue wood. <laughs> 